Welcome back, Rainmakers, to the Crypto Rain Channel. I'm your host, Jay Murph, and today we're going to talk about some of the bigger things I've been thinking about overall. So we're going to talk some about cryptocurrency. We're going to talk about investments in general. So without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and get this party started. So one of the bigger questions um, I have for myself as well as each of you is why are we here in this space at all right now? You know, when we try to talk to friends and family about this, sometimes they give you those standard things. Oh, that's risky. Oh, well, Bitcoin. Yeah, I read an article that says it's going to go to zero and we get all of those things, right? So why are we really here? Fair to say we're here, partially because we know that this technology will change the world, but secondarily because we're looking to improve our financial situation for the better. So I don't know about you, but that's why I'm here, and specifically why I'm here. I don't know also about your background and what you went through, but when I was a kid, what I was told is, go to school, get good grades, and if you get good grades, you'll be able to get into college, and if you get into college and work really, really hard, you can graduate and get a degree, and you can get a good job, and then someday you'll be rich. Well, how's that working out? It's not that they're completely wrong on that. They're just partially wrong, and they're also overselling exactly what the situation is which is formalized education is what they're selling, right? So if you get good grades in high school, then you can go to college, which is a formal education. What they're underselling and undervaluing is an informal education. See, I did follow that route, and somebody um, I knew very well, because they married my sister, was in college about the same time, and they dropped out of college, started 10 different businesses, and you know what? Most of them didn't go anywhere, but one or two or three of them, actually I think three of them, went pretty far, and one, one of those went really, really far, and so by the time I graduated from high school, they were essentially millionaires. Not graduated high school, graduated college, so I had put additional time, investment, worked three jobs while going to school, while married, and struggling to try to finish college while they were out in the real world. Now, they didn't stop their education. They continued their education every day. They worked on themselves and grew themselves specifically related to what they wanted to do. And so he tried to explain to me at the time, but I just wasn't in a place that I actually understood it. When he was dropping out of school, I had that talk like I felt like, oh, older brother, you know, he's marrying my younger sister. Let me tell him how it is. And you need to finish your education in order to have a chance to do anything because at the time he was making ten dollars an hour doing some IT stuff for a law firm and a ten dollars an hour in this place that he was living that was never going to amount to a whole bunch but I didn't realize all the things he was doing behind the scenes and that he never did stop his education he just stopped his formal education but jumped all in on continuing his education and stuff that was highly relevant to what he wanted to be doing and so even to this day he's never stopped his education he continues to challenge and grow himself and learn but in the informal marketplace where he's learning these things. And so oftentimes formalized education is oversold and informal education is undersold. And what I hope that each of you are here, that number one, YouTube is the greatest place to continue to educate yourself on the cryptocurrency space, especially because it changes so much. But I hope you are also taking the time to educate yourself on the principles of investment, also the principles on growing yourself. There's books out there like Think and Grow Rich that are phenomenal. The Richest Man in Babylon. Simple book, very easy read, very profound principles that are taught in a simple way is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And these are all great books to continue to grow yourself. Because I don't know about you, but we're all here to make life-changing wealth, aren't we? I mean, that's why I'm here. Maybe some people are here because they're like, oh, this space is down with governments or whatever. And I don't think this will lead to down with governments. Um, but I do think it might lead to a lot more fairness in the space and people capturing the uh, more of the value that they create, which is exciting to me. But governments are always going to exist. They have their place. And um, so the, the more we can get rid of corruption, the better. But in general, um, yeah, 
they're going to be around and you know so i'm excited with where cryptocurrency is going and maybe the monetary system in the world does change to cryptocurrency who knows and that fiat one day com completely collapses on itself just like it always has in history and that here you know we at least know the value of something and we know what this supply is because it's fixed who knows if it goes that route but why are you here now if you're here for wealth hopefully now we're right in the thick of things right in this bull market when things are going absolutely crazy and so hopefully um, you're doing pretty well with your portfolios and that it's growing nicely and just understand this cycle might come to an end we might be halfway through it already and if so you know you want to start taking some profits when you're ready to but just know that these runs don't run for forever usually now if the fiat system completely collapses and all the money rolls into crypto then well this market cycle will be different from the past number of cycles so maybe it won't follow the pattern but i do remember in 2017 people were saying this is different and the dollar is going to go to zero because so much printing is going on and that everything's going to move over to bitcoin and that didn't happen what also didn't happen is I didn't take profits anywhere near the top. In fact, I wrote it all the way to the bottom, and I'm not going to be personally making that decision again. So whether you where to cash out and what decisions you make, that's really up to you. What I would encourage is continue to grow yourself. Um, hopefully, you know, you're catching some good education through YouTube, and it's very informal education, but also through books like you can buy a lot of these books online and have them shipped to you, or you can even get like an Audible account which was bought out by Amazon years ago, and you can listen to these books on tape. So as you're driving around in the car, they're a great way to continue growing yourself because um, the reason I got so excited about cryptocurrency is the shortness of the cycle so and the volatility of it. So though everyone says, oh my gosh, it's so volatile, you can lose 95% of your value, which is true. You can lose 99%. Actually, you can lose 100%. The upsides are also really sharp and strong like that, which attracted me because my background is a real estate investor for 20 years. Unfortunately for me, the real estate cycle is a long cycle. From the bottom of the market to the top is often eight years, which tells you it's about 16 year full cycle from beginning to end to where it goes from the very bottom to the very top and then to the very bottom again. And uh, so far, cryptocurrency has been on a four year cycle. So it's just much faster with much bigger margins as well as you're not having to manage tenants and stuff, right? Like, how great is that? If you cash out at a good time, if rates stay where they are, you can literally get, like, USDC, and you can stake that for, like, an 8% return. Well, gosh, I know people in California, in the United States, that they buy large apartment complexes that they then have to hire and manage a management team, all for what they call a, you know, 5% cap rate. And so they're hoping they get appreciation on top of it, but the cash flow is just 5% of what the cost of the acquisition of the building is. And so, gosh, I mean, literally take money, throw it into USDC, you can then stake it at, say, or put it on a platform where you can get 8% returns and you have no management costs, you have no headaches related to, oh, my management team just quit and I need to find a whole new one. And so from that perspective, you, I mean, cryptocurrency is absolutely amazing. Secondarily, this technology will lead us to a much bigger revolution, a technology revolution, much as when two computers started calling themselves in the late 80s led to a technology revolution that has completely changed the way business is done around the world. And so what blockchain gave us is more secure databases. But at first, these more secure databases were slower. They're no longer slower. They're getting faster. In fact, one of the teams at Devio that I've been talked to, and I did just make a seed round investment with them, in full disclosure, just barely yesterday, finalized um, some investment funds with them in the company itself. Now, they might do a token sale. They will do a token sale later this year, and I'll tell you straight up whether I think it's a good deal or not. Um, won't really impact my investment so much in the company unless I convert that over to tokens, which if it's attractive enough, I'll do. And if not, you know, I just really wanted a piece of the company itself. Um, you, you know, their transaction per second, 8 million, and that was just with three nodes, right? And so these databases are not only more secure, but much faster now. Kind of like two computers calling each other over a phone line 
really didn't change the world until they got an internet backbone in there and you could connect with high speed and that led to a revolution around the world but the technology takes steps at a time and so bitcoin changed the world in a direct new direction that at first its effects aren't really understood in fact many of the people you know today don't understand how the innovation that came through bitcoin is going to change the world even if Bitcoin itself doesn't change the world. Now, Bitcoin itself might change the world. That might become the new gold standard and everything looks like it's heading that way. So we'll see how that shakes out. The only challenge with Bitcoin is when we get about 12 or 16 years down the road, the energy cost related to it will be absolutely ridiculous. I mean, currently mining, we're using much electricity as a small country. So my, my guess is some innovation will come around that electricity usage will be a lot less down the road than it is today for mining or, or who knows where it goes. A lot of times technology solves its own problems that way. But that becomes unsustainable at some point because, you know, within several more halvings, we'll get to the point that as much energy, if things stay the same, will be used as like the United States uses and then the next halving and be as much as the whole world. And it gets to a point that that won't work. So my guess is some technology innovations will come around by then. But uh, Bitcoin, whether it continues to be the gold standard forever or not, fair to say that it led us in a technology revolution that will change the world. Because here's what these kind of databases can do that have uh, basically a distributed ledger is just a secure database that leaves a permanent record that can't be deleted, which is really cool for people who want transparency and not so cool for people who don't want transparency because it's always there. And so what's great about that when you get to really high speeds is you can do all kinds of things. So um, it can make cost of everything cheaper. Like one of the ways that VeChain has gone is, hey, we want people to know if they're buying a Louis Vuitton bag that it's really a Louis Vuitton bag or if they're buying Nike that they're really Nikes. And that will solve some problems. It will make it so at least if somebody's buying a fraudulent Nike, they at least know it's a fraudulent Nike. They may still be okay with it, but at least they know exactly what they're buying, right? They're not paying non-fraudulent Nike prices for shoes that are just cheap knockoffs made with cheaper materials. So at least they'll have full disclosure, and that's one solution that's going to change a lot of things. They can change a lot of transparency. One of the things that Devio as a company is working on is cold change tracking. So um, one of the big things in the world today is a virus that uh, people are getting... Um, immunizations for. Well, one of the problems with some of those immunization shots is that they have to be in cold storage below certain temperatures. So you need ways to be able to track that it stayed in that lower temperature for a long time and hasn't gone, you know, above a certain temperature for a prolonged period of time. Well, that kind of stuff is very expensive to track until you get to blockchain combined with some hardware that can track that and then it makes it very cheap and efficient to track that kind of stuff and then you know that this batch has been out for too long and either you could even set up warnings that's like hey this batch has been uh, just gone above a certain temperature um, and so you need to get it you, you need to go get that item and make sure that things are fixed or the whole batch will be lost so not only does, you know, vaccines that need to be stored cold don't get let out for a long time. If they do get, like, left out in, in the open air for a long time, they then, you know, to throw them away and destroy them, not inject them into somebody and, and give that person problems. Does that make sense? So that's just a relevant use case for today. But databases before couldn't really handle that kind of stuff without being too expensive to track. And... You know, permanent ledgers with blockchains going the, the type of speeds we're talking about can be used for amazing good for the world and decrease costs across all the different industries in ways that are hard to imagine now. But it's fun to see this roll out because not only will it decrease costs, that those that are involved in these technologies in the early days making appropriate investments will likely see amazing returns that will change their own futures, which is, isn't that why we're all here today? We're trying to make the best decisions that we can for our, our own futures and maybe the futures of our family. And so I do want to thank each of you for joining me on this journey. I'm just an investor myself. I don't have a magic ball. I don't have a crystal ball. Some of the lessons that I share with you come from actually painful experiences of loss that I've paid through the hard way. And none of this is financial advice. I just started this channel for multiple reasons, which I share with you all the time what those are. 
But um, just as an investor myself, I'm just trying to make the best decisions I can, and I'm trying to lay out to you what decisions I'm looking at and how those are going. I did want to talk about um, some specifics so that, you know, there's something worth following. Now, I've always wanted to share with you these deeper thoughts on business, and I don't know how well the YouTube format is for that. Maybe it's good, but if you're here for cryptocurrency, I start talking general business principles, what I my hope is that you'll see the value in these things because that's what drove me to this space is this is the best space to apply the way I think of an investor. Now, the way I think of as an investor, I'm always asking myself these questions. Can what I'm looking at, can it go 10x from here? Can it go 50x from here? Can it go 100x? Can it go more? If it possibly can, what are the risks associated with it, right? So one of the first directions that blockchain will really change the world has to do with gaming and collectibles, which has been on everyone's mind. So let me just show the screen. Now, I wanted to share with you how my little investment in NBA Top Shot, and if you're a regular follower, I know I've talked about this before, but about six months ago, and we can actually look in at exactly the date. Give me just a second. I'm going to log in. Okay. So this is my account, John Rain. You can actually look it up on at John Rain on the momentsranks.com. And my little investment of, we're going to walk through exactly what it was. Okay, so coming back here, and I'm so bummed that this fell through, but 10 early adopters packs for $90, uh, a total of $90 fell through, so they were $9 a piece. I did get 10 here, and see, my bank was rejecting these transactions. That was six months ago. I did buy this LeBron James rare card, number 209, for $58. These two transactions failed. I'm, I'm so bummed about this. Um, these were some early rare packs, and they were selling for, I guess they were just premium packs, $24 a piece, so $240 total, and that totally fell through, and um, very frustrating. And that's not Top Shot's fault. It's my bank that has, you know, very strict, hey, we don't recognize this type of transaction, and they just fail it, which is really good for fraud protection and stuff. Really disappointing when you're trying to buy NBA Top Shots and they sell out like this, and so you missed out on some good stuff. I did get this two packs of rookie debut, drop two, and then I was able to buy ten more. And then I just got, I was able to get one Lace em Up Series Legendary Pack, which, you know, at the time was $230. That was a lot. So how did that turn out? Now, at the time, I didn't know that NBA Top Shots would do well. I just suspected that they would do well. I mean, it's basketball collectibles. Don't have anything to go off of other than, like, what baseball cards and basketball cards and hockey cards had done. But I thought this is really cool that they're using the blockchain to actually give you ownership of a digital moment. I suspect it'll do well. I don't know it'll do well. And, you know, a lot of people that are basketball fans have really gotten into this, and the amount of users has grown tremendously. The amount of users who have, are following this and investing in packs have probably gone 1,000x from when I was buying these just six months ago, and it's because of all that adoption that the prices have gone absolutely crazy. So what I spent, I mean, if we go back and add up these costs, so $90 plus 58 that's $148 plus 118 so we're looking at 258 266 dollars plus 590 um and math starts getting so that's 800 dollars okay so we're looking at i spent over just over a thousand i was thinking it was 900 but it looks like it's about 1100 total dollars and that's turned into 171 thousand dollars so what's that gone 160 x ish Roughly maybe 155x from there. And did I know that would happen? No. But here's what my thought was on the technology behind blockchain. Is that the first things it will go to is games. And so it will change the world. But as new technology comes out, like the internet comes out, where's one of the first places that internet technology went? The gaming industry, right? I remember playing video games on my friend's computer on what was called the bulletin board system. So you had this game, and it was mostly text-based with very little graphics, and it was kind of a storyline you had to follow. And we were in you know, the military at the time, and so when we were off for the day, we, we were bored and in the barracks trying to find things to do. And we played this game, and we took over this world on the bulletin board with some strategy, which I love strategy like no other. 
So we came up with a strategy. There's probably about 300 people that you would have to call into the bulletin board on your phone and connect to it on the landline, and it was slow and stuff. And, you know, sometimes it would be busy because they had three or four phone lines, and, you know, these different people would log in at different times. And so we set up this thing to take over the whole world, and we were successful at that. We won't go into it too much, but that, that was a lot of fun. But, um, you know, video games is where it went first. And so collectibles at the time, the Internet didn't really go into collectibles till now because there was no way to give you ownership of things. I mean, there are collectibles on the Internet, but you weren't guaranteed ownership till the blockchain came about. So really, video games is where it was. Now, video games, there's some ownership of items, but it's what you call trapped value. So one of the games I like is World of Warships or World of War Tanks, and you can pay extra money to buy a premium tank, like $60, U.S. and you own that tank. The problem is you don't really own it because you can't sell it. Who really owns that is the company that produces World of Tanks. And they call that trap value because you're like, man, I can't quit playing this game because I put so much money into it. What I love about the direction of gaming is not that the companies are going to want to go this route. It's that they're going to have to go this route because as some companies go this route, they're going to make so much money that anyone who doesn't go this route will be forced to copy it, right? And so one of the early games that went this route, I was also an investor and made fantastic money on it. It was called Axie Infinity. And so I bought some land chests that gave you actual land and it gave you um, some items with that land. And, you know, I think this has gone about 40x from when I bought it. Now, that's not been the best performer because I made these purchases about two years ago. So 40x over two years, that's not... It's actually higher than 40x, I guess, because at the time, um, Ethereum was about $75. So if you think about it in that way, yeah, maybe it's like more than 40x. Maybe it's 60, 70, or 80x. I don't know specifically what the numbers are. But if you think about the Ethereum return on investment, it's probably about 10x. But Ethereum has gone up 20 times from there. So maybe the overall return is about 200x. This one's a little bit harder to figure out versus this, especially because I started taking profits on it and values kept going up and I took more profits and more profits and more profits. So if I had waited to the very end to take all my profits, then um, I would have done even better. But um, this is a game that's really cool for those that like turn-based games like Pokemon kind of battles where you have your lineup of three and they battle you know, um, if you do a player versus player, then they have three and you have your frontline tank and you have your high DPS ones. I just don't like the turn-based games. It's just not my style. But on investment side, you know, I thought you can own your own land and you can put items on it and you can build it. And there are clearly some people that are interested in this game. And so I, I think that holds particular value. So what is the next games that are interesting? There's a Starbase game that I'll talk more about. I still have some research to do on it. And they have, they partner with Unreal Engine and supposedly they have something else that, that helps it so the graphics won't be so taxing on um, people's own systems. So they won't necessarily have to have a gaming computer to play. So we'll see how that's coming together. That one's very interesting. Um, I don't even think they're yet to where you can even make some pre-sale investments in it. But that's one I'm looking at that hopefully I'll get some more information on in the future. So games and collectibles, it's gone that route. I've shared with you all multiple times the VV app by Ecomi, and I'm a huge fan of like the Batman 3D collectibles. Like let's see if I can even show you. Uh, let's see. Like, you know, I was just playing around with this with you know my wife. And um, the fact that you can do augmented reality, I can't, you can yeah, see good enough. The augmented reality is a lot of cool. So I took a picture of my wife with Joker next to her, right? And I really think that those 3D um, collectibles, non-fungible tokens, will do really, really well because of their integration with augmented reality. I think they would have done well anyway just because their timing was exceptional. But the augmented reality and your ability to make memes I mean, imagine if they sold the Bernie Sanders one with him with the mittens like this, right? And people could then put it and take pictures just with their phone. I mean, that would do really, really well. You see how many memes came out when that moment happened, right? And people then photoshopped the picture and put that everywhere. Um, 
And so they're continuing to uh, evolve that technology, but Ecomi, and um, they do have a token that you can buy, Omi, that should be also coming out so that you can buy it on Uniswap soon, because it's only on two very small uh, exchanges right now, and so that will give it broader capabilities. But the collectibles themselves will probably do well. Like, for example, these moments at NBA Top Shot, um, vastly outperform what the Flow blockchain did. So if you're buying the right moments and the right collectibles, they'll outperform what the blockchain did. Now it's hard to get some of these moments. And the secondary marketplace for Vivi should be open soon. So look for some good pickups on that because initially, like when I bought this LeBron James, I mean, I paid $58 for this, and it's now estimated a value of $23,000. Now, the secondary marketplace, when I saw that, I was like, man, I think it'll do well from there. Yes, it has. Um, and so it's done exceptionally well. Why? Because it's highly desirable. So look for some good pickups on the marketplace when that opens up on some of the things that you missed out on. Now, do I know that they'll do this well? No, I don't know that. I just suspect that it will. And this isn't financial advice. I'm definitely not your financial advisor. Um, I'm just trying to make the best guesses for myself and share with you what my thoughts are on things and be as transparent as I can on all of that. The second direction things go is kind of like a gamification. Now, some of, uh, you know, our space is very technically difficult in a lot of ways. I mean, if you think about all the headaches you have to go through to be fairly deep in this space. First, you go to a place like Coinbase or now Voyager or you know, other sites, Binance has a fiat gateway if you're in Europe, and there are other places like, Bit, what's it, Panda or something. Um, there's different fiat gateways that you can use and that you, you can send money and get it into crypto, and then you have to then send it to somewhere else. And the difficulty level is high. In fact, there's some people that have been in space for a year, and they're like, hey, Jmerv, how do I do this? And I was like, well... Probably the same way I did it, where I found a YouTube video specific to that, and I just followed exactly what they did. As far as creating walkthrough videos, that's, in general, not what I'm good at. And I only do that on a very limited basis because, you know, I, I, I wish I could say I was like a super technical genius. I'm not. What I've always been good at is economics and then psychology of people's behavior related to economics. That's my strength, not technical walkthroughs. So, like, the gamification. Now, OneSwap is a fairly simplified thing. What I love about OneSwap over everything, um, there's lots of different farming places out. So, um, it's always, farming is always a risk that the people who create these really do a rug pull on you. Now, what I like is their ties to the actual OneChain team and that the OneChain team an analyze not only their OneSwap site, but they analyze the One mask which is really the wallet I, I use to send OneChain through and do my transactions. And so um, I also love how cheap it is to do, I mean, look at how cheap it is to do this withdrawal. So 43 WASP, I'm going to do claim this WASP. Now that's only like $10, $12 worth of WASP. I think last I checked they were trading at $0.25 cents a piece. So you can't even run this type of transaction on Ethereum because you'll pay a $30 fee to withdraw $10 of value. And so, oh, I just want to claim I do not want to withdraw. So I just want to claim that 43 And look at the cost on this. So one one is trading for about $1.20 today. So it, here, if that were a one there, that would be like one cent worth. So we're looking at point. 0 0.0195, so 0 0.02 cents to run this transaction to claim $10. So now it has been once I ran things and it was 4 cents for the transaction. I actually just denied it and then waited because I'm addicted to how low the costs are to running these transactions. And one chain has a lot of amazing things coming down the road. And I have spoken more with the developers behind um one swap and also one chain and what they're doing is hard for me to explain from a technical standpoint because um it's taking me a while to wrap my mind around some of the things but uh, a lot of things are coming with one chain and they're leading the technology of interoperable chains and so they they have a way of creating store min nodes where you can essentially stake your different coins and make returns on them but that's actually providing liquidity so 
like there's some problem solutions out there. Say you want to wrap a Bitcoin so it's tradable on Ethereum network. And so you're going to have essentially an Ethereum representation of Bitcoin. What they're what the first solution developed was, hey, well, there's this third party that we hope will act honestly, that if you send them one Bitcoin, they will send you a wrapped Bitcoin. And we hope that they're transparent and they and they don't screw everyone and start sending out a lot more wrapped Bitcoin than what they really have as Bitcoin for backing. So one, one chain was built from the get-go to be interoperable so that they can allow things to wrap in a way where it can be trustless, that you're not trusting for some entity, some third party that's supposedly wrapping them, that you're praying that they're honest players and that they don't defraud anyone, so that things could be wrapped in a trustless way, and they've created some great solutions about that. So that, um, And they have an Ethereum sign and a wand chain, and then... Bitcoin and and to make these all interoperable and they'll be adding XRP soon and I think they already have EOS and some other things going and so then you'll they'll interop, interact with all these different blockchains so that's one of the many things that they're doing behind the scenes that I'm excited about secondly back to where we're going is like gamification right what's good about gamification is just the ease of understanding it now a lot of the stuff out there is very difficult for people that haven't been following the space for a few years to understand, even like Uniswap, right? They have to get a MetaMask, and then they have to figure out what's going on about transferring different tokens and a simpler way to do it. And so it's not really simplified yet. It's still fairly hard. What was nice about what Wanswap did is that you can swap just like Uniswap. If you do get a wand mask, just like the, the process is exactly the same as getting MetaMask and setting it up, it is just a separate thing. And they do have some integration coming that actually you'll be able to integrate MetaMask directly with these things. That's just coming down the road. Um, so that then they won't, if they already have MetaMask, they won't even need to get wand mask. But for now, you know, I when I saw WandSwap about January, I went ahead and got this. And I've made some fantastic farming rewards, which I've continued reinvesting and reinvesting to the point that this is pumping out some really good money um, if you think about this is how much the different things are producing a week so 1746 wasp if i add these two up that's about presently a, you know 2200 or 3200 wasp per week and that's about 800 dollars a week or 3200 dollars a month in passive income being on here now what you're hoping for with farming is that you are actually getting a piece of the transactions when people use wanswap to swap from something that you're providing liquidity for. So WAN to WASP, when somebody makes this kind of transaction, you're getting a little liquidity provider fee. Now, one of the downsides to farming is that if the prices go way up on one of the things that you're in, there's what's called the impermanent loss where you lose some value there. So um, still with the transaction fees that you're making, um, I've still kept providing liquidity here because the WASP token has done well, but... Um, Secondarily to that, what I figure is all the transactions that are happening behind the scene, if those at least balance out the impermanent loss, then um, then I'm doing really good on the passive returns on this. So I guess back to where we were going is the gamification that's coming with a secondary site built by these same developers that will work with the WASP token still, but also another secondary token. It will be more gamified and hopefully even easier for new people to use, and there will be some funner rewards. I use the word funner. That is not a word, but I like it. Anyway, some rewards that are fun. So we'll see how that goes. The easier they can make it where it's kind of like Farmville, the app that like took over phones, um, the more successful it will be for earlier adoption, right? So overall, it's still somewhat hard. You got to go to like Qcoin or Binance or something, and then you got to download Wand Mask, and then you got to send Wand Chain to your Wand Mask address, and then you've got to sign in your Wand Mask on the site, and then you'll have access to your Wand Chain that then you can swap into some of that into something else, and then pool. You can add liquidity to a pool and then you can start farming. So it's still somewhat difficult. Hopefully um, this will continue to be improved and easier as the space develops. However, 
the people that do figure out all these things and make their investment early in the technologies that will get simpler and easier to use as the masses come, that's when the returns come. So back to NBA Top Shot. Now the reason why these have gone up so much is there's about a thousand times as many people involved in Top Shot as there was just six months ago. And so it has driven up the value tremendously. And maybe it's not a full thousand times, maybe 500 times. I don't know about you, but I tried to get in on the rare pack drop. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Like the first time I sat there for about half an hour before and their site crashed because they had so many people. And so they delayed it for a day. And then I got there an hour early. I was working on my computer anyway. So I got in the queue. And then when the timer actually came down to like, 15 minutes left, they assigned you a random number in the line for 43,000 packs that they were dropping, and I was number 118,000 in the line, which said in less like tens of thousands of people drop out, there's zero chance I'm getting a pack here. So I just left it running while I was working on some other things. And sure enough, like nobody even dropped out like... <laughs> Because these rare packs, they're selling them for like $220, but they're instantly worth a 1000 or two. And so nobody dropped out. They all, for the most part, bought them. And so like everyone who was in line behind those first ones that got randomly put in the front of the line, well, they're the ones who got it. So um, that's why the value has increased. And number one, Top Shot's pretty easy for non technical people to be able to come in here and try to buy a pack and they can buy it with a credit card rather than having to send cryptocurrency or anything. And as a lot of this other stuff gets easier and easier for non-crypto users to use and more relevant to them, could do really good. I mean, imagine where a game comes out and one chain would be a great thing for this to be built on, but a game, and there are others, um, Wax is really going this way too because the transaction on Wax are so cheap that you have games that there's crypto on the back end that funds the transactions. But imagine a Farmville that has actual rewards and actual money that you have to fund with actual money. But if you do really well in the game, you could make actual money. And especially if it's in the form of a game, that will attract massive users. And I haven't seen something that cool yet, but just do know there are people that make money. They might be in a third world country where the cost of living is so low and they're making good money playing Axie Infinity. They might make $15 in a day by earning small love potions and then selling those small love potions. Um, yeah, so like that's better than, than if they got a job at the local factory where they might make, say, $10 a day after 8 to 10 hours of hard work. And here they were on their computer and they were playing a game that hopefully they enjoy anyway and they made that kind of money. So it's funny how this is changing our world in some ways, right? Especially in those nations where the cost of living is so low they can play games like this, and too bad it's not my style. I'd have fun earning money on that. Like, I've always been fascinated by earning money through video games. Just for me, this isn't my style of game to do that with. So I did earn some money on the investment side of it. Where else are things going? Well, we'll see. I'm looking for those video games, those higher-tier video games, where there's some collectible items at the beginning that end up being worth tens of thousands of dollars, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Haven't necessarily seen that yet. Some games are trying to go this way, and, you know, right now NFTs are all the craze, and some of these NFTs down the road will be worth tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, and some of them will, a lot of them will end up being completely worthless. The It really just depends on how high their desirability is and how memorable they are in the space, right? And so who knew that cyberpunks were going to do so well, whereas Crypto Kitties haven't like they did really well last cycle but since then the values just haven't been the same so the the makers of that actually are the same makers that made top shot and they learned some very valuable lessons and they made a fortune from crypto keys in 2017 but this time they set it up even better to introduce scarcity because in crypto kitties you could keep having kittens and kittens and kittens so there was no scarcity really other than you'd have to pay an ethereum transaction every time you bred um Whereas here there's, you know, scarcity. And so it's a lot better for the investor this time around because of the scarcity. All right, guys. Well, I try to keep you up to date on what I think is going on. Um, I've spent some extra time just reviewing Devio the last few days to make that personal investment. It was a sizable personal investment. And as well as some other accredited investors, I know I put them on the phone with that um, interested in investing in the company side of things. And... Um, 
Yeah, yeah, good company. I'll talk more about them later. Uh, I, I like what's going on, and, and they're really going on the business side of things. Other than my channel, you probably never heard of them unless you are on the enterprise side of things and you're involved in the enterprise side of blockchain, then you're probably very familiar with who they are. But, you know, being on the front side of crypto and crypto investment, because they didn't like raise money through an ICO and then try to give everyone updates through that, and they went a totally different route to build their company, more a traditional route of building a uh, you know, a product and a service, and then going out and selling it, and then raising some money through some of the people that they know and investors that they knew. And then they'll be releasing an ICO down the road with the token that they're going to run on their platform. Um, it's just a different approach than everyone's taken. They already have a minimum viable product that's out there that's working. They actually are work. They'll, they'll be revenue positive, unlike most of the people in the crypto space. Um, they'll be very revenue positive very very shortly from here. And so it's just a different approach that they've taken. And right now you've never really heard of them, but you probably will. Just kind of like, honestly, 18 months ago, had you ever heard of Polkadot? And now it's like, you know, in the last 10 months, you've heard about it endlessly because the technology and their solutions are really good. You might have heard of Dr. Gavin Woods as a co-founder of Ethereum, but it wasn't really on your radar, and now you hear about it every day. In fact, when I first heard about it, and it was like $3, I, I thought with the hype alone I was going to buy it while I did some fundamental research. And on the hype alone, you know, I, I made some good money, but I, I sold it and um, didn't rebuy back until like a month ago. It's been trading sideways for a while, so I've been buying some extra dot on the side. But... Um, I had to understand better what their solutions were, and so I did make some money on, uh, I know because of all the hype this will do well, but uh, while I did more of a fundamental analysis, yeah, then I, I missed a lot of the window until now. I think, personally, I've been picking up on DOT while it's been trading sideways because it'll probably shoot up again. And one of the other reasons I didn't hold more of it, because it competes in the same space as Cardano, and my buckets were completely full of Cardano, and so I figured if they're in the same category of lower risk, Therefore, lower returns overall, because Cardano was already pretty high by then, um, then, you know, my buckets were full with that. But while it's been trading sideways for so long, I'm like, hey, it's a heck of a deal. I just can't continue passing it up anymore. And I've been buying some more of that. So still looking for deals out there. My questions are always, can it 100x from here? Can it 50x? Can it 500x? What are the possibilities? Then what are the risks associated with it? How much do we know about them? I do appreciate those who brought B Pro to me. Um, honestly, it was so hard finding good information on it. I did finally talk about it when I could find some, but I shared with you I still don't feel like I have totally good information on it. Since then, I found out a lot more. Um, the co-founder was part of Polka, Polka Markets and in some ways some of the other stuff. So uh, I guess this is the CEO, and there's been other interviews with him. And so... Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of written research on him, and there wasn't even a lot of interviews to go off of. There was one that we could look at, and you know, now that I know more about that one, I feel even better about it. But I did make a speculative investment on that. It's like, hey, it's got so much hype going on, I'm just going to throw some money in there. And then if I, in the meantime, don't find the right backing on it, um, I'll then sell, hopefully for a profit, um, and in the meantime, I've done more research and feel better about that overall. And I know some of you suggested it as early as like a month ago, but I'd never heard of it and couldn't find enough. And their website doesn't give you a lot. So um, then learning more about the CEO, I feel better about that overall because he was involved in Polka Foundry as a co-founder of that, as well as some other things. He's been in the space for a while, and all this wasn't clear. Um, also, Pro is on the... the betting side of things or what they call prediction markets. There's a lot competing for that space. In fact, one of his other products competes for that space, which is Polka, I think I said Polka Foundry, but it's Polka Markets, I think, which is also prediction markets. So we'll see how those completely uh, interact. But, you know, at the time that market cap was still pretty low. It's, low, it's not really high yet, a little bit higher, and I'm not sure what to think about how that space will do. There's a lot of regulation that they can run into. And if I'm right on this, they're out of Portugal, and they're very com uh, regulation compliant with Portugal laws. So we'll see how that comes together. If they can stay in compliance and they don't get shut down in countries, 
it could go very well from here. Um, certain countries have been against online gambling because it competes with their gambling, their their government endorsed gambling in some ways. So they do have some compliance hurdles that if they get through in some of the different countries, they will do really well. And if it doesn't and they get locked out of a bunch of countries, they won't do as well. All right. Now, if you do have a token out there that you are you think will do really good, I'd like to hear about it, but here's what I need. I do get suggestions. Say, hey, can you do a review on this? That's, that's not what I need from you. I, I do only have limited time in the day, just 24 hours, and I try to sleep at least seven and a half of those. So um, what I need is what the ticker symbol is, and I need to know in as much detail as possible what you like about it and then what the market cap is presently at. If you give me those three things, I will at least look at it. If you don't give me those three things, I probably won't even look at it. But if you give me those three things, especially a lot of detail about what you like about it, uh, you know, in respect to that, I will at least take a look at it myself. Now, as to whether I'll cover it, I'll probably only cover it if I really, really like it. But some of the ones that I have been passionate about came from you guys, Orion Protocol. I have to give you credit. In fact, Bpro was one that came from several of you. In fact, I think about five different of you. But honestly, only one told me that um, why they liked it and stuff. And so that's when I started looking deeper at it and um, then just continued to do some research over time because it was hard for me to wrap my mind around it. I don't know the betting side of things, the gambling side of things. I'm not a gambler by nature. I, I guess in some ways I am because investing is just a little less risky than gambling. In general, in gambling, there's not really a true win or lose. It's like in order to win, you're actually getting other people's money. And so I don't prefer that so much as uh, an expanding universe of like investing. Whereas, yeah, sure, you've got to buy what somebody else is selling, but as the project value overall, the pie increases, then anyone holding that can can benefit without necessarily being, there being a detriment to someone else. So the, betting's always going to occur, especially on sports games. And now with esports, I get that betting can be huge because really what a lot of people want to do is be able to bet on who's going to win the Dota 2 championship or who's going to win this and who's going to win that. And probably the crypto space is going to be the best site, best place for those types of things to come into, come to fruition. So maybe things like Bpro will do fantastic. I just don't know tons about the betting side. But thanks for bringing those gems to me. Um, there are some other ones. That's all that's on the top of my mind. And I want to cut this video short because it's already really long. So thanks for joining me on this Saturday, guys. And until next time, see you later.